Recorded live in Las Vegas, Nevada for the 27th Annual International Association of Square Dance Callers. This is Tape 11, using the basic program. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. This is a session on the basic program. For those of you who were in Grand Ballroom A and heard the presentation on the PPC, the Program Policy Committee, you know that basic is about to be done away with as a program. So uh, we have two choices. One is either we go ahead and discuss the basic program, I mean either the proposal passes, in which case the basic program will be dropped, but mainstream will be the entry program, which means a lot of people will be using plus, which means that the same problems will occur. So we will probably be using calling it mainstream. It doesn't matter. Uh, this, our discussion, I think, will still be relevant. Or the proposal will not go through, in which case our, our discussion will uh, still be relevant. Um, let me introduce the panel members to you. This is a panel, which means I am supposed to be the moderator. They are supposed to be the do doing the talking and answering. So I'm going to have very little to say after this except to point left or right. We also would like to have comments from all of you. We do not have a roving mic, so I will have to repeat your questions into the microphone so that we can get them on tape if they are relevant and not dirty. I would ask you at this time to have everybody please turn off your cell phones and your beepers so that the program is not interrupted by personal calls. My name is Dick Maziotti. Um, uh, I'm going to be the moderator. On my right is Al Stevens. Al is from Germany. Uh, Al is a little dopey because he got, he's been driving for many, many hours uh, to get here. They built the bridge. Not all the way from Germany, I understand. But Al is a, a, a member of the board of governors of Caller Lab. He is a caller coach, an accredited caller coach of Caller Lab, has been calling for 42 years. <laughs> coming up Saturday. This coming Saturday. <clears throat> and, and, yeah, and, and calls sort of all over the place. Uh, on my left is Jerry Justin, who is also a member of the Board of Governors. I'm the only one here who is a member of nothing. Uh, Jerry is a member of the Board of uh, Governors and uh, has been calling for 33 years. Years is my part. The number is yours. <laughs> years. Yeah. Uh, I've been calling for 12 years and uh, uh, have been running a basic program in the New Jersey area. Uh, Laurie and I started a basic club about four years ago. Uh, the, uh, what I would like to do is very quickly give you some idea of some of the things that we had sort of talked about covering and then uh, have uh, Al and Jerry make comments as appropriate and support questions from the floor. At some point, we may get a square up and have either of these two excellent callers uh, show you what kinds of things can be done with the basic program. One question for those of you who are here who are callers. How many of you call the basic program now? How many of you are callers? All of you who are callers call the basic program, folks. The first call on the C3 list is circle left. Not anymore. It's part of my business. <laughs> Uh, for discussion, we, we would like to discuss the basic program as an entry point. Should we use it, yes or no, as an entry point? Uh, I know Jerry does not necessarily agree that it should be used as an entry point. So we do have, we do have even up here on the panel, some uh, variations of thoughts on what the basic program might be or should be. Uh, how to start a basic program, should you care to start one in your area. And I think this discussion, this part of the discussion, if we get to it, would also apply to those of you who are in areas where all of the clubs are plus. You can use the word mainstream instead of basic for how to develop a program uh, in an area where all of the clubs are, some, are a little bit uh, different program. Uh, dancer and club opposition to basic, how do you handle that? Uh, very quickly, you don't tell them it's basic, they won't know the difference. Uh, caller education, do we have callers who can call BASIC? Uh, one of the things about using BASIC as a program is you have to learn how to call it. And it may not necessarily be as easy as you think it is. Uh, then if we have time, I think we can do some, uh, have uh, Jerry and Al do some interesting BASIC and show you what can be done with BASIC, which in effect is like everything. Uh, Al? Comments, age before, I uh, shouldn't have said that, huh? <laughs> I uh, feel very strongly that the uh, uh, basic program should be a viable program. Although we don't use it as an entry level, 
Uh, we use it as a preamble to mainstream. Uh, however, we use it in a unique way. Uh, we use the basic program to provide a lot of variety where we don't want to provide complexity. Okay. Um, and I'll be sharing some ideas as we, uh, as we evolve on uh, what we do from day one through uh, a certain point in time. Our, our, our classes by our, I'm speaking primarily Germany where I grow up and, and work four nights a week on a regular basis. Um, we start our classes usually in September and graduate probably the end of July at Mainstream. Um, most of our clubs or our classes are through the entire basic program by the beginning of April. So we take our time. Uh, we have a little more time to deal with the, the, uh, the progression than, than a lot of other places do, even, even within Europe. There's a big, a big split in, uh, in, in theory in Europe. I think Sweden dances uh, two years to mainstream. And I think what their program is a six on, six off, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Jerry? Are they still working that way? They have six months to basic, and then they relax and dance six months, and then they enter you into the mainstream program for six months, and then they dance for six months. It's six months on and six months off, uh, so that the, the students are in a learning mode for, for half a year. Then they're in a dancing mode, enhancing what they've already learned for a, uh, a period of time. Then they get into mainstream, the same way, six months on learning, six months dancing. Then they get into plus, <laughs> six months on, six months off. Uh, and there are areas in, in, uh, within Europe that, that don't operate like we do in Germany. I can only provide thoughts on what I do in my own backyard. Which, huh? Uh, six on, six off. The six months on, six months off. But we don't do that. <laughs> the basic program before teaching the mainstream program before teaching the plus program. I had the 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 pleasure of uh, doing a dance in California. And the the, uh, the club caller says, oh, it's a plus dance. He said, but I've got a class in session. Could you help me and, and uh, call a tip for the class? And I said, be, out, be honored. He gave me a list of the four plus calls that he had not taught his class. And uh, what he failed to do was tell me the 14 calls that he hadn't taught from the mainstream <laughs> list <laughs> as well. So I, I, I learned a lesson. Um, let Jerry jump in. I'm sorry, did we wake you? No. Okay. I, yeah. No, I'm here. Um, I weighed this uh, when they, they asked me to be on this committee. It seemed like they really wanted me to support that the basic program should be a, an entry level into our dance system. I know that some things have happened today that may cancel everything we're thinking about. Uh, I still think it depends on your area, but I, I do believe with some changes with some slight changes that I use, I think that the basic uh, level is a very good entry level. And I use it, but I use it for a special reason. I'm in a situation that a lot of you are not in, where I work in parks and I have basically either a five-month or a three-month session. And in other words, I work in the winter with winter visitors and the people come in either in November or they come in January. And uh, if I have enough, pardon? These are retired senior type citizens, yes. And um, so in, in essence, uh, if you realize you've all taught classes, that I don't have time to go through mainstream. If I do go through mainstream, I do exactly what the caller did that give Al his list. I don't use 14 of the moves. That would be my choice. So uh, over the years, we've, de we've, we've developed a program that we use, and it's basically the basic level because I run the classes for an hour and a half once a week. Now, you say an hour and a half. 
class has got to be two hours. I want you to think back to your classes a little bit and think about the last half hour, the last 15 minutes those people were there. Not necessarily the first or second night, but the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth night. You can't get them to do much. I don't, I don't care what age level you're talking about because they're fuzzy. It, it ended. You know, it ended. And so you tend to make the breaks a little longer to cover the two hours. So I say, I, I have a time restraint in the parks we work in. I've got stuff back to back. So I said, I'm going to make it an hour and a half. And we're going to dance pretty steady. Give them enough breaks so they get to know who their corner was and where their people come from in each of their classes. But we're going to dance for an hour and a half. And we're going to leave them, let them walk out of that hall not being fuzzy. We're going to let them walk out of that hall enjoying everything that they did the whole day. And, and you know there's going to be exceptions because people have bad days and people have good days. And there's going to be days you can't teach one new thing and there's going to be days you can teach ten new things. So you got to play it uh, in your mind. you got to watch that. The, my, biggest, my biggest complaint with the basic list, and, this, and, and I use it this way, and I'll give you my reasoning behind it. And, and a lot of you are going to disagree with what I'm going to say, possibly. Some of you may like what I'm going to say. Whatever, if you, if you do like it, it's going to take work on, on, everybody's, on everybody's behalf. Uh, first of all, uh, the suggested teaching order has is, is been um, outlived its uh, usefulness as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more after I tell you that there's, there's a few moves that I will not use on the basic list until I have to st I know they're going to go dance to another caller. I will not teach them star through. I will not teach California twirl. I will not teach dive through, and I will not teach box the net. There's one other one I will not teach, but I'll tell you about it later because you don't really want to know it right now because it doesn't follow the reasoning. The reasoning on these moves here is that we cannot, cont we cannot work a flow type of situation using the hand-to-hand -hand motions. And I'm talking about over the head, somebody over the head uh, arm motions. If you do any of those calls and you go on to the next call with a couple exceptions, somebody's going to use the same hand twice, meaning that somebody's body is off position to make it a continuous flow. Now, the reason it starts through is very early in your teaching order list. I think it's 23. So it's one of the ones that most people teach early. But we don't even get them in lines or boxes or anything to start with. We start with circles and we start with stars. Uh, stars. Now, listen to the word. Stars. We tell the, all the girls, step into the middle, put your right hand in. Now, put touch hands, make a right hand star, turn it once around, come back home, stand beside your partner. Boys, put your left hand in, make a left hand star, star by the left, once around, come back and stand beside your partner. Now, we just got them doing stars. And uh, the second night, third night, wherever you put it, we teach them star through. Now, tell me, as, a, as, a, as somebody who's going to learn a language, that's like trying to teach... Uh, a word that is uh, one letter different in, in any language that sounds the same and telling them it has two different meanings and you watch the you watch the people now what I see happening as soon as we teach star through we forget stars until we get to the point where we need to do that figure head square through four make a right hand star and head star left in the middle and come back and then that's about the only stars that we do after that and yet it's such a workable, danceable mode that we, that we need to use it. And, and I still say the reasoning that we don't use it is because of the, the problem that we have of separating stars and star through. So I, at that point, I break the rule and I bring in slide through. And I teach slide through very early. It may not be the third till the third night. But I teach it. And yes, it's harder to teach. Yes, it's harder to teach. But when they learn it, if you can get them through it and, and be laughing about it, they're going to be the better dancers than you've ever seen, and you're going to have a, a smoother dance system. And uh, partner trade is already there. It's in your after you started doing trades. Partner trade's already in your basic list. Don't need California twirl. You don't need dive through, and you don't need to bring pass to the center in until we get to the next list. So I still haven't broken the list other than by that one call, because you can do a pass through and centers pass through and the outside's partner trade. So we're, we're saying that we're trying to make it danceable and easy for the people to make a continuous flow of dancing. The, it would take more work at that point because we're now going to have to stop using the word star through. My problem when I go to Europe to call, and, and they alternate it in the, in the rooms, is they call basic, mainstream, basic, plus, no rounds between. 
and you can do a, a whole tip. And you finish the basic tip and you turn around and they've all squared up. Whoever dances the next level and they're squared up. You finish the mainstream tip and you turn around and they're all squared up for basic. And they know uh, what level they dance. Uh, the dancers uh, really don't know what level they dance. All that they understand is that when you call something they don't know, somebody's made a mistake. Here he is in, 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 uh, in, in, in Sweden, Denmark. Break the basic program down even further. Have you ever gone in and yeah, done, done a basic 34, basic, basic 34 mainstream? Four tips in an hour? Yeah, they, they, even some some other breaks. But And, and we're not used to, uh, over here, most of the callers are not used to calling basic program to start with. But what my hardest thing is, because I don't use star through, I don't use it, is that I can't call slide through in a basic tip over there. And I have to concentrate on calling star through. And, and it's okay because they've learned that. And, and I'm just I'm, do, I'm doing a little soapboxing on this because I, I believe strongly in, in those moves. The Going to the order now, because we stress circles and stars, and you get to what you want to do when we start the people to dance. We want to get them to move. We don't want to stand there and preach to them and talk about that you have to be here, you have to be there. We need to get the people moving and dancing because that's how you're going to keep them. That's what they came to do, and that's what you want them to do. It's easy to do stars and circles if you think about where it goes. It's not easy until you've done it a while, and it takes a little bit of work. Now, we're not worried about, about anything else right now. We start out with that. Now, we, we, did, we can't use star through, so we've got to figure out something else here to use right away to get them in some kind of situation. Uh, English, and, and, and I'm saying this from an English aspect too, um, where English is the first language, lead, the word lead is, is kind of a neat thing. Heads, now they know who they are, they've danced that, we've done all other kinds of things. Heads, lead to the right. All right, head boys, point to the right. Now, as a couple, lead over there. It doesn't take much, and they know a call. Now, we skipped ahead because lead to the right is, is uh, number 20 on your list where it is. Now, you say, well, what am I going to call now, and how are we going to get back there? It's an easy thing to have people move when they have somebody with them touching. We, we want that. We understand that because that's part of the reasoning that we use hand moves to start with. We said, well, if you're touching, you won't get lost. At least if you, don't get lo if you get lost, you're with somebody, and you're happy. And so we, we, we use that terminology that we, we want to be touching somebody. So now we're learning to touch after every move. Heads lead to the right. So we've, we've taught them to lead to the right. Now we need to do something. We're, we're already in a couple. We're with somebody that we're happy with and we're comfortable with. We've been dancing with our partner. We come back to our partner forever in beginners because we want them to feel some kind of sense of, of achievement. We don't want to switch the partners around too early. We want them to get there. So we say veer to the left. All right, hold on to your partner, veer over. Now we teach the handhold in the middle of that line where the girls are touching palm to palm. Now we've got our first line, first line, and everybody's touching somebody and they feel good and they're looking the same way. We don't have to worry about ocean waves or anything. We're in, in a line. We say it's a two-faced line. Now right after that, since we walked into this, and we're, do, we're doing this in, in a continuous motion, so you've got to have a good night for this, is couples, look ahead to the next spot in your big box in your square. If there's somebody straight ahead of you, you're going to go to where their footprints are. Look at their back, follow their legs down, look at the floor. You're going to circulate to that spot on the floor. Now, if you don't have anybody in front of you, look over to the couple that you're with in the line. Look at that couple. Look where their feet are. That's where you're going to go. Now, if you've done this before, you're going to, you know that the biggest problem is there's a, somebody that's looking into the square, and they want to keep looking in because they don't want nobody. They want to be able to see everybody. They can now, and they want to see them afterwards. So it's that couple that's going across. You're going to have to help a lot. All right. All the couples, we're going to move to the next footprints. Now, keep moving. Make sure you touch somebody new, girls. Make sure you touch somebody new. Don't turn around unless you have to go to get there. Now, it doesn't take very long before we've got the couples knowing how to circulate. We've got them knowing how to circulate. We don't need to worry about anything else. Even in the same tip at that point, I might even bring in the point of bend the line. And I've, and I've taken four calls, and I made it so you're working with your partner, and I'd say bend the line. And I'd teach them that, all right, now, we're going to start this way. Girls, you want to look in to face the other person in your line. Boys, you want to face in to face somebody in your line. Bend the line. Now, everybody, touch hands in your line. Look at touch hands. Now, again, we're stressing this because when we start moving on, we're going to do slide through, and we're going to have to stress that. When we do partner trade, we're going to have stress touching hands. And if you stress it early, we're going to have an easy time of making them touch hands because they're always going to want to touch hands. 
And now we're in lines of four up to the middle and you come right back and you're telling them now, all right, it's just like we did when we were in squares where the heads went up to the middle and back and the sides went up to the middle and back, but only those with free hands are going to touch. All join hands, circle to the left. Now we're back to something they know again and we haven't changed our sequence or whatever. Uh, we might have in this case what I just did. Uh, find your corner, alum and left. I would have done one other thing first, but that's all right. Uh, and, and you go back home. And we're going to do it again. Heads lead to the right. Look right at them. All right, circle four halfway. That was what I didn't say because we'd been doing circles. Now veer to the left. We got some flow. Look ahead now. Look where you're going. Couple circulate. All right, touch hands now. Bend the line. Touch hands up to the middle and back. All join hands. Circle to the left. Alum and left. Now they've done something more than just make a star and they've done something real easy because they were able to do it. Now we get to try it with the other couple. And now we get to throw in a little bit of something extra the next time. And it takes a little bit more sight calling to figure out where you're going. Let's, after we've done this, and I'm, I'm stepping ahead now. I'm not going to do this to that same night. I'm going to dance them, make sure they got that. We're going to say, only the boys circulate. And you know, they've already learned that. They've done it with couples for so long, but they're happy to go to get somebody else. And then we can, we can start bringing in trades with the easiest people that are there. The ones that are touching hands, the girls in the middle. And we've traded. Now we're working into something that's really good. We still feel comfortable. The dancers feel great. The collar feels a little more lost because now I don't have my partner with me and i got to figure out where my corner is and how to get there without calling the star through. Stay sure. in the lines. Can I interrupt for yeah. a second before we finish the lesson? Because I think we want to get to some of the people out here to ask us questions about it, too. Uh, the, the basic program, we are supposed to be talking about it here as an entry program, and I understand that, that you feel that it isn't necessarily to be used for that. But the question that I have for some of you, for the panelists, is do you have any questions about using BASIC as, a, as an entry program? Is there anything that you feel about it as a program, uh, the, getting past the individual calls or individual ways of handling it for the moment, uh, I think we can get back to that, and because I think it's really important what he, what Jerry's talking about. But I'd like to ask: Do do you have questions uh, for the panel about the basic program? Yes, sir. We. I'm going to repeat the questions. Okay, the, the, the comment is, if I may paraphrase it for the tape, uh, that, that according to the proposal that is being made right now, the word basic is going to be dropped, but the program basic, certainly the calls are still there. None of the calls are going to be uh, changed, but the gentleman from California uh, is suggesting that basic would, as a name, would still be something to be retained because dancers then have some place to feel good about when they go to mainstream. I personally don't necessarily agree with that in that, in that, oh, I'm sorry. I see. Okay, I, I'm, I was mistaken about that. What, he, what he's saying is that if we drop the word basic, then the word mainstream is what they are dancing, and that's going to make the dancers feel feel good about it. Yeah. Other comments or questions? You, you said I, I wasn't in favor of it. I am in favor of it with, with, with changes. Right. I am, I am yeah. in favor with minor changes, and I am telling you that I guess I got into use, how I, why I would use it that way too quick. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, not at all. The proposal, I'll go over it very briefly. The proposal is, involves dropping the word, main, the word basic, making mainstream the entry program. We are going to call it mainstream, and it is the current mainstream program. There are going to be no changes to the calls at this point. The program after mainstream, before advanced, will be called plus. So that now we're dealing with mainstream, we are dealing with plus. Then very briefly, they are going. the committee is going to decide how long it takes to teach those, then try to get the calls evened out so that you can teach both of those programs. Is that a fair description of the program? 
proposal? Okay, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. The, the question is about the pace of teaching, um, that, that there are different, different uh, methods and paces of teaching, and that some places teach calls a lot fast, some people teach calls a lot faster than the other. I don't think it's something that's ever going to be addressed in that we all have individual callers who are going to... That every caller teaches differently. Well, definitely, definitely, we're all different. That's that's the good thing about about the activity is that we can all do things different. Well, you can't tell somebody to teach the same way and what you're gonna how you're gonna teach them to do a right and left through may not work for me doing a right and left through. Uh, the thing is that you've got to remember it's not what you or I how you or I teach it. It's how the the uh, the dancer receives it, and whatever you can do to make it easier for the dancer is what counts. And, and however you do that, I mean that's the great thing about watching somebody else teach. Uh, if, if you've never had the opportunity, that's something that every caller should do. Uh, one time we did a, a set of lessons, and it was set up with three callers, and the rules were this. We all had to be there, and we changed the order of who started the lesson, and there was no set order. But the second caller had to call, use what the first caller taught and teach something to go with it. The third caller had to use what the first two callers taught and use something to go with it. The rest of the time we had to use those calls that were taught. And it made the callers work a little harder to use something that worked and flowed. And you know, after a little, after we did that three lessons, you fell into a teaching order that er, that everybody sort of felt comfortable with. And you watched other people t teach, and you learned positive and negative. And and even the person who maybe made a mistake teaching, when he watches the next guy re-explain it, had learned something too. And we haven't said anything wrong. You know, there isn't a wrong way necessarily to teach as long as it works. I heard of a group of callers that did that same identical thing and their dancers left with the impression that swing through boys run couple circulate was one call <laughs> as they came back they came back to me and said when are we going to learn swing through boys run couple circulate I said huh <laughs> uh, I am going to ask people to come up to the microphone up here I'm, uh, because obviously I'm not paraphrasing things very well you had your hand up sir Randy Randy this is Mr. Doherty. This question is for Jerry. Uh, I was wondering the uh, little chicken plucker routine you did, heads lead right, circle, veer, circulate, bend. Um, where is that within the course of your first night, second night, third night, and so on? Where does that fall into your teaching? And my second question is, do you do the reverse of that, where you have the heads lead left, circle right, half, veer right, couple circulate, bend the line? Let me see. What was the first one? <laughs> yes. Um, it would not be on the open nights, but it would. It might be the last open night. That's how quick it would be. That's first, second, or third night. Yes. I mean, depending on how, you, how many nights you open up your class, you understand. If you've got new people there, you can't expect to have somebody do it and then have somebody new the next week and do it again. If, if I do it at all, it would be the last time you'd have new people, expect to have new people, or the night after that. 
But that's how quick I would do it. And yes, the second part of the question is, I would lead. I would teach lead left and lead right on the same time, so that they understand they have left and right hands. And uh, same with veer right and veer left, but still making it a smooth transition. I would start with one until they felt good with it. Then I would go with the heads lead left and and uh, veer right, and uh, doing the same calls. And again, that is so to me is so is so um, is something that everybody can grasp. That once you get it one way, it's very. I've I've seen some pretty slow dancers that will be able to do both of it. You know, slow learners because that's that's a simple grasp, and everybody's helping everybody do it. Question. Thank you, Michael McMullen from Portland, Oregon. Uh, on the comment about teaching, uh, I don't know if I got that from this saying from here or elsewhere, but somebody once said. You can't teach people anything, but you can trick them into learning. And the idea of whether you use the technical word-by-word -word definition or paraphrase the definition isn't all that important because different people learn by different ways. And I think that's important. The other thing I'd like to ask Jerry is, uh, would he do an example of how he uses stars and the type of star choreo he uses? Because I have found that star choreo has gone away in the past 10, 12 years. I've got two pages of two hand stars here when you're done. But two hand stars are tough. Uh, <laughs> I think the thing, the things, if, you, if you're if you realistic, all of you that sit here and you all know the list and all of you that teach, whether you teach basic or not, whether you teach mainstream, and whether the programs changes to whatever we do, there's a certain amount of the calls on here that we've lost over the last few years. Um, for an example, we were doing a festival, and on a Sunday morning, we were I was emceeing it, and we have callers from that were attending the festival call, which is something that isn't done much anymore. And one of the callers got up. Don't think he's in this room. I know he's here, but in the in the and and he called a, a rhythm record that the break was Alaman left, Alaman thar forward two, and you make a star. Uh, shoot that star full turn around. Pull your partner by and all man left and weave the ring. And the people, the whole floor that was that was dancing a mixture of things couldn't do it the first time he called it. Uh, Ken Bauer and I were on the stage and we were singing with all the guys. So we were helping out on the next part. And he came to the middle break again. It was his turn and he did the same figure. And the whole floor went down. Maybe one square got through and I'm talking about 20 squares. And the so we went, we got up to the last part and I, I stepped in and, and did the same figure identically but I used a lot more words from the experience to try to help them shoot that star all the way around look for your original partner look for your partner pull her by and I mean worked my butt off to get them through that figure and we got most of the people through it and at the end of it everybody's clapping so we didn't have a breakdown at the end and and as we were going off the stage as the, we thanked the caller Ken turned to him and he says you know he says that he turned to him and he says that's a figure he said that's that's a good figure that's a figure we've lost in the last few years it was a great break figure that we used to use all the time. So th what I'm trying to say is the times are going to change. But if, if I look on this list here as a traveling caller and going in to call for new dancers, and I love to do it, I, I know what they're not going to know. When I walk on the stage, I know what they're not going to be able to do. And thars are one of the things that, that, that we have lost. Stars we have lost, as in a usage, more than just the basic figure star that we go. Uh, I'd, I'd like to start off a tip at a, at a plus dance. Four ladies, star right. Courtesy, turn your own. And I'll guarantee you that half of the people out there will have done a four ladies chain. Because that's all that we've ever used it after that. We, te we start to teach the courtesy turn with stars, and then we tell them it's a chain, and then we forget about stars at that point from that situation. Uh, the same with uh, with um, many other things, and I, I got off the topic on this. I know, but though, that's one of the couple of things that you the question you asked me was to talk about stars. I don't know if we want to get into choreo on on stuff like that. I think just in a, in a little while, I think so. But I think that... I'm sorry. I think that it. Uh, I, I would like to entertain some more questions from the floor, just to get a, a little bit of feeling of some of what some of the rest of you are looking for concerning BASIC and the BASIC program. What are your concerns? What are your thoughts about it? Do you use it? Do you use it successfully? How do you use it if you use it? Michael? If you're going to sit around back there, you've got to get up. 
I would just like to see you all give us some good examples of basic choreo. We've been calling mainstream and plus so much, I think we've forgotten how to call basic. I think they probably will. Other questions? Yes, sir. Doc Terrell is talking on his way up to the mic. Right. Yeah. Uh, Doc Terrell. Uh, and I'm just sort of like a visitor here, but just my own personal feeling. Are we thinking in dropping basic the fact that you're saying that everything has to go through to mainstream? Remember that the new caller coming in will know nothing at all about being able at the fact that he could split a mainstream program. We all know it. We've been around long enough to know it. But the new caller is not going to know this. How about the new dancer? The new dancer has no place to go until he gets all the way through to mainstream. I think that's a long trip. Why do you want to go somewhere? At the learning process, now let's 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 back. Let's that brings a good point up. Yeah, I mean, all right, you're right. Uh, um, it brings a good point up. Uh, if if your dancers feel they can't go anywhere to dance when they're at lessons, I would say you're running your lessons wrong because it's a dance every time they walk in the door. They can't go dance maybe to somebody else at that point, but it's a dance and should be treated so. If if it if it is a, a drill and and work to be there, then then there's something wrong with your lessons. The people who I'm talking to had to have control. If, if, why don't you come on up and, and make your same so that we can get them on the tape, please? She's I, I, she's asking about whether or not uh, the caller has control. No, no, I'm not asking. That. You're not saying that. No. You just made a comment that you have to control what happens at your dance so that it is a dance. And what I'm saying is that some of us can call in situations where we just call on an occasional basis, maybe only one tip, and so we don't necessarily control what happens at a dance. The I'm not a club caller yet routine. Uh, I'm, I'm just doing tip or twos. And, and how does this go into lessons? I was. I'm just perplexed because I was. Okay. Okay. Dave, come on up. I'd like to address uh, Doc's point over there. If we take the term "basic" away from our mainstream program, I, I guess I'm looking into the future and looking into um, advertising square dancing down the road or using basic as a teaching tool if you take that name off of there you've taken one you've taken one of the tools out of my case and to give you a little example um, to go through the entire mainstream program if you were to put together a television show that might uh, supplement teaching square dancing in a, a hall where, where people can come and see you I can see down the road where we may want to to have some television programs 30 weeks of teaching on television is awful long time. And to do mainstream justice, you'd have to do at least 30 weeks to do it, I think. Or at least I would if I was going to do it. But I could advertise that I'm going to teach the basic program in 15 weeks of television time. And I might even scrunch it down to a 10-week cycle. And I have the tool there to say, okay, this is square dancing, and this is an introduction to square dancing, and it's we're going to call it this name, the basic program. And it, and it coincides with something that we as Caller Lab can identify with. When you take that away from me, I, I don't know that uh, teaching 1 through 50, 51 mainstream program is going to make any sense to a non-square dancing public. So I'm, I'm really concerned about what we're looking at here. I don't care. I guess I'm, I'm safe with just calling the mainstream program and having some subtitles in the mainstream program. The community dance program and the basic program are subtitles in the, uh, in the mainstream program, but I'm worried about the rest of it. I'd like, I, w I wanted to do that when Doc was up here too and I got carried away. I th this goes back to the other the PPC, and I w I've been involved on it along with the other Board of Governors. 
and I'm just going to tell you what I what I think, and I'm and I'm I think I'm right here on this. The we're trying to streamline the entry program, and and the first step here is to uh, take away one name out of the three that we have in our many entry lists. And uh, if we had tried to take away plus, we would have been. We've we already tried that basically, and it would, didn't work. So nobody wanted to do that. Basic was a, a level that was unused. And, and we're just trying to get a feeling from the majority of the people. If, if we can get one name gone, if you remember that the next part of this is that we're going to set up teaching order and rearrange the lists to two equal lists, that you will have your list back, your entry level list, whatever it's called. And it will be a teachable, viable time. And possibly it, w it won't be much longer than what the basic list is now because you think about adding plus list to the mainstream list is a 30 some moves. We're just over 100. If we half it, if we half it, if that's the thing that works out when they go into the, the looking at how long it t takes to teach each thing, then you're looking at a teaching uh, list for the first entry level list, whatever we call it, of approximately the same as we have in our basic list now. And, and I, I think that I'm right on, on the idea, but we're trying to get a feeling from the people to see what they want first. And that's kind of the way I understood it was explained in there, that it is going to be eventually we're talking about an entry level list that's workable, whatever you call it. The question that, well, go ahead, Randy. I just want to respond to, to Dave's comment. I mean, it wasn't only about 10 years ago that this was the basic first column, and the center was the extended basic. And then we had the mainstream. Nobody got up in arms about dropping the word extended basics, and yet we're having a whole bunch of crying and, and uh, negativity about you know dropping the word basic. Uh, we could fold this thing any way you want to, and I can teach whatever calls that you want me to on the top half or the bottom half or 60-40 or 70-30 or whatever we come up with. We have to be unified. And I'm, I'm going back to what Jerry is saying. We might end up with... Uh, uh, an entry level that is really nothing more than the basic list. We're not calling it the basic list anymore. The, the, the existing dancers are not going to really realize if you haven't called Dixie Style to a wave that night and they're having fun, they're not going to miss Dixie Style to an ocean wave. Most of them don't miss it now. You okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Come on up. Add fuel to the fire here. I would just like to kind of continue with what Randy said. I use a very viable basic program in Minnesota. Um, we do basic dances at least once a month, and we are averaging over 20 squares at the basic level. They're advertised at basic, and I have dancers at that basic level that will never, ever be mainstream dancers because the three-quarter turns disorient them and other reasons, but they, they are okay going through the 53 basics. And I am a proponent of keeping the basic program, but I'm also in support of this proposal for, for the, the new policy with what Jerry said in mind that eventually what is now basic will be our entry program. But... I think the word basic gives those new dancers a kind of a comfort zone that they've accomplished something. This is a first step towards my being a mainstream dancer. Even though they're dancers from day one, but basic is kind of their first goal. So, Dave, I believe you said something that, that triggered an emotion. I love the analogy of uh, toolbox. Uh, however, I look at the individual calls as the tools that I have to work with. I don't look at the programs as the tools. Uh, I, I evaluate the calls. We enjoy uh, catering to students while, uh, when they're in a class environment. We do that from probably October through June uh, in, in our teach year. Uh, we don't make a differentiation between basic and or mainstream. Most of the of the uh, callers have agreed to follow the list almost in order. Uh, there may be a, a variance of one or two calls uh, that, 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 uh, that we may uh, elect to put distance between. 
Uh, for instance, the front side of your cassette. Do I have a green light? Okay. <laughs> I like to put at least uh, two weeks or more distance between those two calls because of the uh, uh, fact that, that it sounds like one call. Um, so because most of the, the, uh, the callers agree uh, uh, to somewhat use the same numbering system, we set our dances up uh, to accommodate students and we will put the call that will be the bottom line. Uh, students are welcome if you're dancing through the call lead right or through square through. And they know that, 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 uh, that they'll be welcome and they'll be challenged with, with calls from square through on up to zero. Those are the tools that we work with. Um, as far as getting rid of the name, <clears throat> I, can, I can only see a danger in those, those areas where basic is the entry level. And uh, unfortunately, there aren't too many areas that, that, that I've run across where basic is the entry level. Uh, I foresee probably a minor problem in, in Sweden, uh, possibly uh, Denmark, England as well. Uh, Germany uses mainstream as the entry level. Uh, with minor adjustments, I think that can probably be accommodated. But it's going to take hard work. It's going to take a lot of uh, brainstorming uh, to accomplish. Uh, why don't you continue before I do show and tell? <laughs> uh one thing about the proposal, as I understand it, and those of you who know it better and have worked on it uh, may correct me here, but my understanding is that eventually what we are trying to look at, if it goes the way it probably should go, is that 10 years from now, BASIC will be the entry program. It's just that we're going to call it mainstream and take 10 years to adjust the calls to get it to that, because we can't do it any faster than that with the dancer population and with the caller population. That is my understanding of what this proposal really means in the end, that we are trying desperately to get our entry level back to what Europe and England and Sweden and so on are using uh, because it really works, and we need that to work here. It's just that we're going to have to take 10 years to do it, and in the end we're still going to call it mainstream, although by then God knows what it'll be called. Other questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. Chris Day from England. We do basic for the first year, all position basic, and we graduate at that level. And we make them dance six months to a year, and then we do mainstream, and the same, and the plus. We haven't gone beyond that level. We're five years for the one club. Um, and we find it works very well because they know their basics before they push onto the levels and we keep the dancers. The problem I see is if you make it a mainstream entry and you call it mainstream, what happens when you get your dances? Um, September, Christmas, when you're taking the new students in, will they have completed the whole level to dance or will they have done bits in it or otherwise and they say they are, we are a mainstream dancer and they're not. What happens then? The students are disappointed because they can't dance. You're all saying you're saying the list as it stands now. I would like to keep it. And uh, I mean, I mean, you're saying I if the list. If I change the name to mainstream and then change it back in ten years. That seems to me. Whoops! <laughs> Edit that beep. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we said we were going to we were going to change it back. You must. I know that you're from England, and so you're 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 very heavy on the colony, and you can make your dancers stay in there. But I don't think we can do that in America. I I understand what you're saying, but it's I'm not, I'm not saying that it's you can't you can't hold the dancers back. I mean, you you can there. <laughs> I was I was just saying that maybe England can do that. We can't do that here. There is one other problem that is going. There is one other problem that is going to have to be addressed here, and if we go on with this program and do it the way it's, it is being proposed, and that is that we callers are going to have to make some awful strong adjustments. We callers are going to have to learn how to call BASIC 
or mainstream, which can be quite a challenge. Uh, I was, uh, Laurie and I started a basic club four years ago in an area that has all mainstream and plus and advanced and challenge clubs around. There are no basic anywhere, of course, around. We did not start it as an entry level club. We started it as a basic club and invited all of the other dancers to come to it. We also invite students and new dancers to come to it after January. And we bring the level of basic back down to wherever they are at that program. We have been reasonably successful with it in that the club has been running four years. Uh, we're dancing anywhere from eight, uh, eight to ten squares in an area that a good club dance is three and four squares. It is supported by all of the other clubs we get dancers from all levels. One of the things that we've had to do is provide challenge for the dancers. We do that with a hot hash in the middle of the evening where we call hot hash basic that is a delight to some of the challenge call, uh, dancers. Uh, but we have to learn how to do it. I can't tell you the number of the nights and hours that I've spent working and agonizing over basic just trying to learn how to call it. So it is something that we are going to have to make some adjustments, we callers are going to do. These two guys have made the adjustments uh, considerably, and I think if we have no more significant questions at the moment, perhaps you would like to see them show you a little bit about what can be done with BASIC, both interesting, smooth, and perhaps even challenging. While we're milling around, um, let me mention that uh, about 20 years ago, uh, I had the pleasure of doing a caller school with Cal Golden, and Cal had done some statistical work, and he came up with uh, the, uh, the figure 86% of the movements that we work with involve a fraction of quarter, half, three quarters, or whole, whether it be a turn or whether it be a facing direction or whatever. And he opened my eyes on the the fact that fractions are very important from day one. Um, I don't want to ask. I'm, I, I'm just going to assume that most of us start from a big circle. Is that a fair assumption? If you if you start your open house, I'm talking day one of of a three day open house. Uh, uh, you have dancers on the floor, they come in, and uh, they pair up, they get on the floor, and they're in one large circle, and you go from there. Uh, <clears throat> teaching the Alamans, and I pluralize that not because I'm going to do two Alaman lefts. I am a strong believer in injecting Alaman right uh, as a call. Even though it's not on the, on the program, it doesn't take a Ph.D. to figure it out. Uh, so after we teach the rudiments of Alaman, left, right, circle, left, right, uh, we start now involving the dancers in accepting fractions. Because later on and throughout the entire program, we're going to be fractionalizing a lot of calls. I don't need to pass through in order to do a dosa. I can do a dosa do once and a half and equate to a pass-through. I don't need to teach pass-through, even though pass-through is not a monumental call uh, uh, to teach. Uh, I can get there using a fraction. Um, if I do an Alaman left with my corner, come back to my partner and face her, uh, a do sa do once and a little bit more so that you end up right shoulder to right shoulder creates a mini wave. They don't have to know that at this point in time. If they touch right palms, they've created a two-hand right-hand star. If, with the men on the inside, ladies on the outside. If they turn that star halfway and the men move forward one girl and make a two-hand right-hand star with them and turn it halfway and the girls move up two men, we're now be, uh, uh, teaching the, the value of a fraction early and we're also instilling that they must listen because I may have the, girl, the, the girls or the men pass one, pass two, pass three. If the one you're passing isn't wearing a smile, give them one. <laughs> Don't cost anything extra. And any time I have the partners paired up again, the men are on the inside of the set, ladies on the outside, I don't have to tell them to cast off three quarters. I can tell them to turn 
a two-hand right-hand star, half, and go a quarter more and the girls turn around and circle left. Wind in the face. Could we have a demo square on the floor? I don't need music. I just want to walk through a couple of things that I do early in the program. I'm going to take the first, the first two or three days. After we teach them who the partners are and all this other stuff, and they know what the couples are, if we could uh, have the head two ladies only do a do-sa-do. Stay in the middle, touch right hands, make a two-hand right-hand star, go back to your partner, he will courtesy turn you. Uh, simplicity. Heads, um, do a do-sa-do. Once and a half. Take your partner, promenade outside, three quarters, sides, do a do-sa-do. Stay in the middle sides, make a right-hand star, turn at a full turn, and a quarter more, face the center, do a do-sa-do, once and a half, Did you get the half? Take your partner, promenade outside, three quarters, the others do a do-sa-do. -do. Stay in the middle, make a star, make a forehand, right-hand star, turn to the full turn, and a quarter more, and you should be back home. Or you can come back to your corner for an alaman left. I've taught, I, I haven't taught them promenade three quarters, but they danced it. And they've had a ball doing it. Um... Let me see. Heads uh, past the ocean for simplicity. Swing through and the boy run. Here's one I use at mainstream dances quite often. Girls in the center make a two-hand right-hand star, turn it about three-quarters. With the sides make a three-hand left-hand star. Turn it a full turn. Head ladies come back in and with your right hand make a two-hand right-hand star, three-quarters. Boys courtesy turn your partner and you've done a lot of nothing. It's a zero. It's, it's done a lot of work and you've done absolutely nothing. And, and uh, you can have a ball with three hand stars. Uh, four hand stars are, 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 are a blast. Don't lose sight of the fact that, that fractions and stars can really, really provide a lot of variety without adding to the complexity. Variety without complex. I wish I had coined that phrase. Jim Mayo beat me to it. Um... Sides past the ocean. Swing through, the boy run. Okay, those ladies make a two-hand right-hand star, turn it three-quarters. Put your left hand up with the heads, make a three-hand star with the three-hand left-hand star with the heads. Turn it, a full turn. Those side ladies come back in and make a two-hand right-hand star, turn it three-quarters. Boys, courtesy, turn your own. When I get ready to teach chain down the line, I'll teach it in this manner. Heads just pair off, please. Step in, face corner, star through. This is all for simplicity. I don't teach pair off. Um, pass through. Take your partner's hand, wheel around, and wheel a quarter more so that the ladies can reach out and touch right hands. Now, I want those ladies to make a two-hand right-hand star, turn it a full turn, and the boys reach in and courtesy turn your own. Your own is not in reference to your original, but who was standing by you when you started. Heads, uh, everybody pass through again. Wheel around, girls go forward. Wheel a quarter more, girls connect. Make a two-hand star, turn to the full turn. Boys reach in, courtesy turn your own. Can you see the value of what I'm doing now? When it comes time to teach chain down the line, I don't have to go far, do I? I just... I just I just have them turn that star halfway, and then the boys' courtesy turn. That will feel like a lady's chain, and what you are in effect doing is chaining down your line. Uh, some say, well, you can't teach chain down the line early. It's italicized because you haven't taught trade yet. I don't need to trade if I know the value of stars. Uh, score your sets one more time. I've got one more little thing. I want to run through this quick. Buy the tape. You can, there's a lot of condensed material on here. And then Jerry's going to take over for, for the next, uh, I hope. Um, I, was, I was pushing checkers one time to find out what I could do with 
non-symmetric or asymmetric choreography. And you know that non-symmetric choreography is using calls or combinations that do not require the diagonal opposite to comply. Uh, and I found this uh, pushing my checkers, uh, couple number one, go down the center, split couple number three. Now separate away from each other and go around three people, hook on the end, make a line of three. Okay, we have a, a, a very non-symmetric piece of choreography, but if those end dancers, if the original number one couple would have stepped forward and face in, they're right back home. I haven't lost a thing. If I join hands in circle right now, they're going to be in sequence with partner. Everything is perfect. I've lost nothing. But I've created a feeling and am, am now painting a picture that the dancers perceive to be difficult. Because now, oh, wow, we got something that we haven't seen before. Star through the lines of three. California twirl. And we have a zero box right here. And I haven't done very much at all. And I've got full control over, over what I'm doing. Okay, square your sets, sides just back out, you're home. Couple number two, roll away. Go across the set, split couple number four, go between them, separate, go around three, hook on the end and make a line of three. Now the lines of three, here we go again. Wow, we got something heavy here. If I have that end dancer on the line of three, original couple number two, do a star through, they're right back home. But the lines of three do a star through. And notice that in effect, I'm, I'm a square through three away from an Alaman left. I've done very little, but I've created an illusion that makes the dancers feel, wow, there's something different about what I'm doing, but still it's within control. I've got total control of what I'm doing. And this is really all calling is is having total control of the dance situation at any time. When we lose the control, we're going to go on the other side and sing the national anthem. <laughs> Jerry, you want to jump in and while we got the square here? Go ahead. I wasn't expecting on doing this uh, uh, choreo stuff. Um, and I, I, I hasten to not do this uh, too much with, with different type material. I'll be in on the choreo development tomorrow at 3.30. And uh, that's that's where we're going to tell you how we can do some of this stuff and build into it and get away with it. Uh, if we do something like, like Al just did, don't just think you can do home, go home and do that, please, and that the dancers will be happy about it. Uh, or you can get them through. It, it's got to be a building process as you do it. Um, I'm, I, I wasn't. Pre I wasn't thinking about doing this. I'm just. I, I know. I thought all the time you were doing that, and thinking, "Gee, I don't know if I'm do that." <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I, I, okay, I'm. I'm going to go back. I, I want to go back to what I was talking about before about things that we've lost from um, time that are in the list that we've lost, and you and you have a hard time getting dancers through now that were very usable, and and still can be usable. Okay, so I, I will use you. Okay, heads. Do you know who you are? Pass through. Separate. Go around one. Come down the middle, heads, and pass through. Split the sides. Go around one. Come down the middle and do a right or left through. How many remember the old post patterns? The old go post, whatever you want. And, and we've, we've lost that. And, and I don't even see it being used on a minimal basis. All right, so let's, let's go back to the minimal basis. Heads pass through. Separate, go around one. Squeeze in, make a line. Now, and I, I don't shy away from getting the, the beginner dancers into this. After we've had our first three or four nights, I don't shy away from getting in with a boy, boy, girl, girl. But I'm going to get them darn sure going to get them out of it in a hurry when I can. And so, so that uh, they feel more comfortable at that point. Just the ends uh, pass through. Go, go around one person, squeeze in, make a line. And we're back to something that everybody feels normal again. And I, and I really took them out into a non-normal situation and got out of it real quickly so that they wouldn't... And got out of it an easy way. And we used two variables of the, of the old GoPo series. And, and it's a whole different ballgame at that point. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Center couples wheel around. And separate. Go around one. Squeeze in. Separate. Don't split. Separate separate 
Go around one, squeeze and make a line. Now, you have more trouble with callers than you would dancers at that point. Because they would have been listening for separate at that point. Now, again, we used, we were in a position to use the goalposts from facing couples, but the body flow was there so that we could use separate. And so we've changed a little tiny wee thing that, that the dancers could do. Now, now this is, this is, this is what, not what I would do at beginners. I'm stressing this. Do not do this with a brand new thing. If they have learned that the, you're dancing and you used all the moves, you've used the separate, they will be able to dance it with the proper lead in. Now, I'm stressing that. You've got to use lead ins. You can't just go call this stuff. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Uh, let me see. Center, slide through. Because I use slide through, I'm sorry. Back away. Uh, now, those in the side position, separate, go around one. Now, round one. And uh, again, we started uh, from a static squared up position. We started, and, and we instead of doing the pass through, and, and again, you can't just coldly go into it. And I don't care how much you lead into it, you're going to listen. You've got to think about body flow. They're standing still, but they're going to move forward because that's what they think they got to do. And yet, we've done a new call, and we're into a nice line at this point. Pass through. The ends trade. Now we're in kind of a fuzzy situation. Same sex is trade. And that makes them think a little bit at that point. Setters trade. And again, I've, 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 I wouldn't do that trade there from a non-standard position walking right into it at that point. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Good. Uh, outside, separate. And slide through. The others back up. I'll circle left a quarter. I don't, I don't remember where we started or anything like that, but we're somewhere close. Uh, yeah, that's right. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go. Don't go. All right. So, again, that, I just took the, the goalpost theory, and we've built on it just a little bit to use something a little bit different on that. Um, I'm going to go to another one. Are you, are you getting tired up there yet? You're not getting tired yet? Oh, okay. Uh, from this position, again, uh, sides, wheel around. Separate. Go around one. Cast off three quarters. Now, I, I skipped out of the basic at that point. I just wanted to show you that you could do something just a little bit different at that point. Pass through. Now, we're not very comfortable now, are we? Wheel and deal. Are we very comfortable yet? Not too bad, huh? Pass through. Just the boys. Thank you. Okay. Uh, again, I, since I don't use star through... I use slide through at this position here, and I find that everywhere I go, I've got to really work really hard to have any kind of success with this. This is probably the, the position I, I'd, I'd call star through because it's uh, everybody wants to face in if I call slide through. Slide through. And, and the girls, and remember to touch hands whenever you can. we get got somebody beside you at that point. Good. Bend the line. Uh, right or left through. I, I had a thought here. Half sachet, and I lost it. Good. Centers pass through. Centers separate, go around one. Come down the middle with the right and left through. And lead to the left. Oh, and again, we're working on body flow. Everybody veer to the right. And the boys trade. And now the, we, again, I'd have to build up an awful lot because those boys weren't touching and they, won't birth, they, won't birth, they weren't both ends. I get that. Uh, bend the line. There was something in here I still wanted to do, and I can't think what it was. Pass through. Wheel and deal. All right. Double pass through. Put centers in. Do a U-turn back. And which way would you have turned on that? Wrong. Towards the center of your line. Uh, let me think of this just for a second. Not towards the center of the line. The, the, the girls or the centers that squeezed in would have turned towards their partner. The ends would have turned away from the center. Was I wrong on this when I do this? Unput centers in. Centers back up. Others slide together. Others slide together. All right. When you're going to put centers in, and I know that we're saying there's no body flow at this point here, but remember, you turn back as a body flow move. And it's also a, a movement with your body. Uh, now put centers in and do a U-turn back. For the, for the end. 
I know. I don't want to get into this. I don't. I didn't want to get into this. Don't don't even don't even think about it. All right. Can I can I yes. inter- just yes, inject something here? And that is that this is one of the things that I have found in having to do basic dances, a whole dance over and over again. Why don't you guys go sit down for a second and take a rest for just a minute? Thank you very much. One of the things that I found is that to provide variety and to be able to call and understand the basic program, I have to keep going back to this silly thing about the definitions. And it's fascinating if you read the definitions what kinds of things you can come up with to keep things interesting for other dancers who are not just basic entry dancers. Uh, but And that's some of the things that... Uh, Jerry was getting into about how you lead dancers into it and get them to get all the way through some of this stuff. But but knowing the definitions, one of the things that, uh, or using the definitions, I should say, I'm sure all of you have this Caller Lab Basic and Mainstream definitions, the copy of it. If you don't, they have them out there for sale for a minimal fee. I don't want that. It's got basic on there. Oh, that's, yeah, sorry. Well, you can scratch out basic on there. But not, not yet. But I have a suggestion for any of you that are having either a basic dance or any of your dances where you want to do a little workshop or you want to do something that's a little bit more interesting than just pass through wheel and deal. Uh, Go into this thing and pick any call you want and read the definition and play around with the definition. It's amazing what kinds of things that you can find in there. The call wheel around is something that, that Jerry used just now, but we don't use very much except promenade, head pair, wheel around, lines forward and back, da dum da dum da dum But wheel around is a real call. It's a call all by itself. And wheel around, uh, I'm sure all of you who have all of you know better than I, but I just found out for absolutely sure that wheel around has a definite direction to it. I didn't know that. I've been calling it for 12 years, and, I, and you, they turn around, and you know, every other couple wheel around. It doesn't matter. But wheel around does have a very definite direction to it, and the direction is, of course, left. You wheel around to the left. That's what the definition says. Counterclockwise around the pivot point. Okay. The left-hand dancer backs up, and the right-hand dancer walks forward in wheel around. That's what the definition says. So you can take, for example, circle left, wheel around, and a quarter more, and promenade. Oh, boy, isn't that nice? Wouldn't that be really pretty? And, and, and once you get your dancers to do wheel around and get them to understand the definition, it's one of those things that I, you know just sparkles a whole program. Yes, ma'am. Come up here, please, to the mic. In changing the name from basic to mainstream, are you trying to get more callers to call basic dances? Like, uh, would the dancers still have an opportunity to go to a dance and dance at a basic level? called something else now that's not that's not the reasoning behind this at all it, we have I, I, I think we said it but I, I know that we're not understanding it and this is this is what's going to be hard in the next day or so to get everybody to understand this situation there are three levels of square dancing right now and from country to country and from state to state there are three different entry levels a matter of fact there's probably six different entry levels if you want to get into there's basic mainstream and there's plus and there's soft plus and there's half mainstream and there's uh, you know uh, what what Color Lab is trying to do is narrow that down let's you know if we, we if we can't make one list let's get rid of one and and make them two lists that's basically what we're asking the membership if they would like to do because nobody wants to lose anything but we what we've got right now isn't working it isn't working everywhere so we would like it to try to work everywhere with the difference in the sizes of the three lists that I just named one being 53 moves the next one being uh, 19 or 18 moves and the next one being 30 something 32 I think it is now uh, we've got three different sizes of lists realizing that the difficulty and the, and the time of teaching is different too the idea is that First of all, we need to pick a name that everybody is, is, will let us lose, let us get rid of. Uh, we tried it with Plus a little bit uh, a couple of years ago, and that, nobody wanted to lose that one. 
and, and we're not sure that the name is the is the big thing, but we need to start somewhere to get this on an equal basis. Once we did, once you, we decide that we do want to have only two names, then we will we'll try to construct the, the two lists in an equal type teaching or time basis, so that we now have two lists instead of three lists. So that when you teach the dancers the first list, whatever we call it, I don't care what we call it, mainstream, basic, whatever, then that is our entry level. And that you tell your dancers at that point, what if they used to be basic dancers, they used to be mainstream, whatever, this is the list. It's going to take a little change time, but only with the new dancers. The dancers that are already dancing mainstream will still be able to dance that first level. If they were dancing mainstream as a first level, there is a problem if we were using basic as the entry level until they get switched. And there are going to be some growing pains. There are going to be some growing pains if this goes through. But it's a hard thing for us to understand wh- wh- why we're trying to. Li- we're not losing. We're not basically losing moves. You know that was that was the thing that everybody hated about the last idea. That they thought right away we were going to lose a bunch of moves. That's not it. Is, does that clear that any? Yeah, I'm J- uh, Joe Kulo from Sacramento, California. I have a question on how people advertise. I think that's another thing that we run into with the various levels. That we're going to be advertising by numbers, or how we're going to advertise. Yeah, I don't think that that's a, a question that we can discuss here because that's something that's going to be taken up Wednesday morning. God, I'm glad I'm not going to be here. Well, it looks or it sounds to me like the rest of the world's doing fine with basic, mainstream, and plus, and we just refuse to try the basic level. Why don't we follow the example of the rest of the world where it's working and they're not losing dancer population instead of trying to change the rest of the world to something we think will work? You might force, you might force more people out the door than you bring in by doing that. You know, when you're dealing with people, people don't want to admit... Uh, they don't want to if they're already established at this plateau they don't want to digress they want to progress it's very difficult to to convince the average dancer that uh, th- that they should drop back if I may one other uh, an answer to, uh, another part of the answer is that we have it available now Who's using it? The rest of the world. Right. I understand that. In the United States, who's using it? In the entire United States, who's using it? One, two, three. You know, how many are using it? it? Obviously, we're not being very successful. And we who are using it are obviously not being very successful at convincing other callers to use it. Yes? Uh, you used to say if we, you know, you can't convince the dancers to go down a level. I say, so what? That population is is dwindling, and the way I see it is my peers, whoever they may be, are not using the tools they have. The basic program right now in the United States doesn't work because the callers see all these plus dancers. They're going to make the money calling the plus plus program. They're going to have more bodies, and nobody's willing, with few exceptions, to put the sweat in at the basic level. I tried running basic dances for a summer and got no support. Because like you say, nobody, oh, you know, I'm not going to dance a basic program. I'm a plus dancer. And that's an attitude that we as U.S. callers, because I agree that there's not a problem in a lot of other countries, it's the, it's the U.S. callers that have the problem with it. And I think that attitude has to change rather than, because they're just going to call plus. They're not going to call mainstream. If, even if you call it mainstream and it's the basic level, they're still going to say, I'm not calling the mainstream level now. I'm calling the plus level. So you're going to have the same problem. You're singing my song. I was playing the role of the dead devil's advocate when I mentioned that. So, Sometimes we forget, and I'll get you right to you. We forget that uh, even in Europe, and, and everything's not rosy always either, and, and Al will agree with me on this, that they may use the basic list, and even in England they use it. When the dancers move on to, pl- to mainstream, and, and as they eventually do, the callers, and, and I'm blaming the callers, it's not the dancers' fault, again leave out part of those moves when they go on to mainstream and when they go on to plus they leave out more moves it's and that's not the way the program was set up it was set up as once you learn basic you add on mainstream and you and use all of the moves but that's not what happens once we learn mainstream we leave off some moves in basic once we learn plus we leave off some more moves in mainstream 
we're trying to get it to a situation where that maybe won't happen because that's it's happening in Europe now. Yeah. Once the dancers get past that, and if you're not calling a basic tip, you don't use the basic stuff. And, and to me, that's that's the caller's fault. It's my fault maybe for not, uh, you know, helping everybody learn how to do that. Twenty-one years ago, Jerry, when I first got there, we had a policy where we were taught uh, that we had to teach every every movement on the list. When somebody pays me to teach them a mainstream class, I must use every call. And the dancers, uh, the mindset for the callers was the dancers pay me to teach them and to use every call on the list. So we tried to strive to use every call on the list. But like you said, times change. Hi, Lenore Region, Fresno, California. I'm saying what... Everybody's having such an odd problem with this here. If we go back to our clubs and say, we're going to go back and we're going to teach basic, mainstream, like you're saying, they're going to, what are they going to say? No, don't you dare call it that, just what you said. They're not going to let us, so we have to basically do what our clubs tell us. Right. If we could do it like they're doing it over there and teach them all position, we would love to do that. We'd be better dancers. But they've been doing this too long. I don't think they're going to let us. It is a problem. There's no question about it. The problem of, the, of what to do with the current clubs and with the current dancers. We have a, we have a caller near us, who, a caller around us, quite a good caller, uh, who very often at a plus dance will call a very challenging tip. And at the end of the tip, ask the dancers, did you notice anything different? And, of course, it's a basic tip. And, and he'll tell them that. And what, it's, what it does is it starts letting the dancers know that basic can be just as challenging as any of the other levels. Uh, we really, really have proven that to a lot of dancers in, in New Jersey, that it's, it's up to you, the callers, to make any of these programs challenging to the dancers who want to be challenged. Had a star tip Saturday night. C2 dancers on the floor. I wasn't calling C2 star tip. There was a plus dance, an advertised plus dance, and my star tip, they said, wow, that was a very interesting advanced tip, Al. And the hardest thing in it was all four ladies' chain. Head ladies only go five quarters. <laughs> the degree, excuse me, the degree of difficulty on the calls that I used from the basic and from the mainstream program, those tools were refined. And the degree of difficulty within each call was increased to about six or seven or eight in some cases. And let me stress, no matter, no matter what we're talking here, we can remember the thing that uh, I think I was reminded of, uh, about the activity a little more vividly um, a month ago when my wife and I had a Saturday night off and we drove an hour and went to a dance. And when you're calling 600 dances a year or 600 sessions a year, that's hard to do. And we went and danced, and after two tips, uh, Janice turned to me and she says, you know, this is why we got into this activity. And you know why? Because we were having fun, we were smiling, and we were dancing, and it didn't matter what level we were dancing at that point. And, and, and us, uh, we as leaders, we need to remember that this is for fun, for the dancers. Now, I understand there's different, different ideas of fun, but basically, it is for fun. That's why we all got into this activity, for fun. And whatever we call this list, whatever's on the list, we just want to have fun using using the tools that we have in the list. That's all. That's all a list is is, is a, a group of calls that are tools for us to use to entertain people. And and if we do, if we forget that, if we don't work on on doing that, we've we've lost sight of of the goal of this activity. Be spelt without you in the middle. Success cannot be spelt without you. Club cannot be spelt without you. See how important you are? If, if, you, if you want more on choreography tomorrow, uh, come to the choreo development at 3.30. Uh, I'm taking Jerry Story's place on that committee. It'll be Kip Garvey and Jim Mayo and myself down there and, and on building choreography. Is there any, anything else anybody's got to say? Thank you all very much for coming. I would like to sum up everything, but I haven't a clue. So thank you all. <laughs>